everyone. Welcome back to the European Women's Chess Championship held here in the beautiful town of Riga. Uh, with you today is uh, uh, me, Grandmaster Arthur Snakeshans, as usual. And with me today we have a very special guest, the tournament director Egon Slavendelis. Good afternoon. Thank you for calling me very special. Probably one of the special things is that I'm a, that I'm a much weak, weaker chess player than my colleagues who are commenting. <laughs> but I'll try to compensate it with some interesting details about the organization of the tournament. Yeah, we so. probably can uh, do that. But uh, before we uh, start to talk about it, I thought that perhaps we need to make some kind of a short recap what happened uh, yesterday and what is the current situation in the tournament. So. Today we play round three. In total, there are 11 rounds. Uh, after round seven, there will be a free day for the players to rest to gather more strength. And uh, so far from two games, there are 12 leaders who have emerged uh, in the lead with two points out of two, uh, followed by 39 and other players with one and a half points. So this is really a very, very tough tournament. And certainly doesn't mean that if you lead in the tournament with two out of two, that uh, uh, I mean, the, all of the major fights are still ahead. And among those uh, 12 leaders, there are two former European champions, Natalia Zhukova, who was the first European woman chess champion in the year 2000, and then after a 15-year break, she also did it once again in 2015. And there we have also among the leaders, Yekaterina Atalik uh, from Turkey, who won the tournament in 2006. Uh, many of the favorites have uh, dropped points so far, uh, which is not unexpected, of course, because it happens. I mean, you cannot always hope to win uh, all of the starting games. And I'll just name a name few of those players who did not win both games. Uh, it's the main favorite, Anna Muzichuk, uh, Katarina Lakno, Antoaneta Stefanova, Natalia Pogonina, Olga Giria, Nino Batsashvili, and Monica Soshko. And the latter two, by the way, they lost already one point. So that's, that's uh, quite a lot. Yeah, that shows how tough the field is here. And we are very proud that also one uh, Latvian woman grandmaster is among leaders. Well, not among 12, but among uh, the second group with 39 play players having one and a half points. So. Yeah, Ilza Berzenia, we are absolutely very happy to see her going well and uh, we hope that she will produce uh, playing more, uh, even more entertaining and interesting chess and in the meantime we also hope that the other local players uh, will show even better results. Perhaps some of them were not exactly happy what was going on in the first rounds, but I mean this is a very long tournament and, and every, every chance is still possible. Uh, so before we um, uh, switch to the games, I already see some familiar openings being played out, at least on the first board, and I could tell a lot about that. Uh, perhaps, Egon, maybe you can uh, tell us something about organizing the tournament. I mean, uh, uh, I do understand you have a very, um, quite a vast experience already organizing the Riga Technical University Open. Mm -hmm. But how it was organizing European Women Chess Championship, what's the difference? Oh, many things are completely new here because the tournament uh, is uh, on one side it's smaller but on another side it is of uh, much higher organizational level because it's an official championship and many things that are completely unnecessary for uh, open tournament are absolutely crucial here. Uh, like accreditations, like uh, special guests, like this video broadcast which we are doing the first time in my tournament. So uh, uh, even though we are quite an experienced team uh, for other events, uh, the, uh, this tournament brought us uh, a very nice new experience. And the, the only thing that uh, I, I can say about how we succeeded, I hope people love it. Yeah. And uh, I hope we, we, we more or less succeeded, yeah. Uh, in general, our team started uh, to do something in 2009. Uh, and the story is the following. Uh, at that moment, there was a, quite a bit of crisis in Latvian chess. And there were no team championship in Latvia. And me personally, I really like team events. And that's where I started to organize. Because we said, okay, we don't have any team championship. Let's organize it. And uh, we did it together with uh, Katarina Stintje, international master from, from Latvia. And uh, so we are also doing uh, a Riga Technical University Open together and also this tournament together. So uh, many thanks to her. Maybe she's listening. Yep. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, and also um, everyone else in my team, which is uh, not very big, 
Uh, none of us is professionally doing it, but uh, well, it is uh, uh, young and uh, uh, team consisting of people that li really want to do that, want to help chess uh, to, to to grow, to promote chess, and uh, that's I think the main the main reason why we why we can do these things. Yeah. I assume with every new year when you organize uh, Riga Techno University Open, you learn how to organize and how not to organize things, probably. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, I think none of the event goes uh, with uh, no failures at all. You always fail, redo, and learn from that. Um, well, but so far, I mean, it looks everything right on the organizing level here at the European Women's Chess Championship. I mean, I've heard so uh, great remarks from the players and the visitors that uh, the playing hall is great, the atmosphere, the playing conditions for the um, participants, they are really excellent. So uh, I really hope that this will be uh, a future like benchmark for the tournaments, uh, not only to be organized in Riga, but also for women's chess in Europe. I hope so. Well, about the playing hall, uh, it's uh, it's always like that that uh, you'll get completely contradictory comments. For example, yesterday some people were telling that it's too hot there, and some people were complaining, oh, it's impossible to play, it's too cold. So you will never get <laughs> perfect for everyone, but uh, we're trying to do our best here. And well, yes, it's uh, the first tournament out of two that we are organizing. So it will be kind of benchmark for us as well, because in 2018 we are all organizing also European Youth Chess Championship, which will be held also in Riga in, in Tipsala, which is a usual playing hall of Riga Technical University Open. Uh, so if you want to experience how it will be in, in 2018 in the Youth Championship, then I, I can invite you to uh, this year's Riga Technical University Open to see the playing hall, how we are organizing. Ah. Okay, I'm, uh, I've already started advertisements. Probably some will come from, from my mouth today. <laughs> I assume you have re received really quite a lot of help uh, to organize this tournament. So. Indeed, yes. Okay. Um, I have to thank many sponsors, uh, starting from the uh, Latvian government, in particular the uh, Ministry of Education and Science, um, Riga City Council, in particular Live Riga organization, and of course our private sponsors, you see some logos also, also in this uh, broadcast. Uh, many thanks to Baltic Law Offices, which is our one of our main sponsors, uh, which is giving almost the same money as the uh, government is giving, and it is just a private person who is giving, so many thanks to him. Also Rietum Banka um, supported us. And uh, yeah, uh, also for, for many thanks to European Chess Union, which is uh, our partner. We are working uh, under auspices of them. They have uh, helped us to sort many things out. So many thanks to them and of course to my team. I already mentioned uh, some of them, but many thanks to all of you.